Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of commodities, working through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and the commodities and ETFs, at least the ones that I follow. If you guys need any help with anything, definitely check out finding-value.com, the website. If you're interested in a platinum membership, use the word discount in the coupon code. We do have a 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time Sunday uh, question and answer session. So if you're a member, definitely love to see you there. Ask whatever questions you've got. I'd love to have you a part of the community if you're not a part of it. So let's dive in. We're going to start with the DXY, and I'll give you my financial opinions. So DXY, we do have a little kind of Batman pattern top right here. There is the Batman. That's usually a topping pattern. It's heading back down. And we're trying to see what's next here. We've got strong buying pressure through here. We've got bank crisis going on here. What is going to win? Um, we've got lots of mixed signals, um, people afraid and fear uh, around the banking sector. That has impacted yields uh, to the downside in a dramatic way. Looking at it from a little bit longer perspective, we've got inflation in the system. We've got uh, oil that was going up, and right now it's in a downturn since uh, probably the last year or so. And things are moving all over the place. Very difficult to read, I would say, uh, for the most part. Lots of stuff happening on the macro level. But looking at this, uh, I would say that <laughs> it's a good battle between the buyers and the sellers in the short term. If we back out a little bit, to me, it looks like we've got good, strong momentum, and we've got a little reversal candlestick where we could potentially go higher on the weekly candlesticks. We have broken out of this uptrend. So this is the uptrend there. We've broken out, and then I think we're going to come back up and then round back over and turn back over at some point in the future. Right now, though, it does look like the dollar could strengthen a little bit more uh, in the short term. Again, short-term stuff is the least reliable to read, and I usually take bigger, bigger time frame, bigger picture views. Looking at the 10-year yield, and this is what's driving the dollar up and down, generally speaking, uh, an increasing 10-year yield or yields uh, strengthens the dollar. But as you can see, we had a nice little breakout here to the upside. We've had a reversal candlestick of all the banking stuff going on, and we, we jetted lower to the downside. Now, interest rates have a profound effect on how assets are being, are being priced, especially with moves as large as these yields are moving in the short term. This is from 4% down to almost 3%, 3.3% in a very short period of time, and that has an impact on the pricing of assets. This here is heading lower, but are we gonna get support on this trend line basically where we're at? If we continue to head lower and the curve uninverts or the curve normalizes, however you wanna say it, uh, what that means is that gold and silver should do very well when that curve normalizes is what I'll call it. When the curve inverts, it means that the short end doesn't fall as much as the long end if it's going down. Uh, gold doesn't like that. And we can I can show you that today. TYX, we basically went down 1.03%. So the long end of the curve fell more than the short end, than the 10-year. And gold, for some reason, does not like that at all. We also had a strengthening dollar of 0.5% today. So if we were to look at that as the yield curve kind of, let's just back out here. So when I compared this to gold, gold does very well on these up cycles and it doesn't do as well on the down cycles. Now, this cycle, it's really just gold. It doesn't really pertain too much to other commodities, uh, but it, it does pertain to gold. And right now we're at a very low level and it looks like we want to go higher in the medium to longer term which is like in, measured in months 
uh, or, or years, like maybe a year or something. But today we invert it a little bit. That's it's basically we might do a retest move before heading higher. Uh, so the curve it went down, but it inverted a little bit with a higher dollar. And then bond prices, these are bond prices. Bond prices are right up against this resistance line. And we'll see if we can break that to the upside. Let me get this out of here. So that's where we're at there. Uh, commodities basically sideways today, down 0.6%. Uh, momentum is heading up a little bit. We've had a pretty strong sell-off here. The sell-off right there, and sometimes we'll come back up, and then we'll break back down um, to the downside, which is a possibility. We've also broken this support level right where this white line is. We've broken that to the downside, and we could spill down further than what we have today. The CRB to S&P 500 still holding steady, 0.15%, right above the, the downtrend line. We've broken out of that channel, and we're doing a retest. And we'll see if we go higher here. It does look like it's a double top. Or the Batman. Hey, hey see the Batman. Backing out a ways, this is what it looks like. We've got a long downtrend, downtrend line broken to the upside. We've done a little double top in the short term, and we're going to bottom somewhere. I don't know where exactly, somewhere. And then, well, I think we'll have a big leg behind this one. But we've got fear in the markets, um, especially now, and it could have further downside if that fear materializes. And or, and or spreads throughout the banking system, I should say. Gold, slightly lower today, down $17. Uh, it's not a huge down day in comparison to this rapid move higher in gold. So maybe we get a little bit of a downside move back to do a retest. Maybe we don't. Um, this is on a really short-term basis. It Looking at these, this pattern here, I would say it's still likely that we could go higher just looking at the candlesticks and what i'm looking at is the large buying pressure candlesticks and the selling pressure in relationship to each other but we do have some resistance up here so we have to see where this thing wants to go silver silver also getting a little bit of selling pressure today that's we got the wick at the top maybe we got some sideways to slightly lower action going on in it before had <coughs> before heading higher uh, platinum, slightly lower, down six bucks. And it does look like we're coming to some sort of decision point where we are either going to go higher or lower. Um, we've got a nice little hammer candlestick here that generally works its way higher with the momentum going that way. So maybe we break to the upside here. XAU to gold ratio. This is positive. We're, we're heading on higher here to the upside uh, for the gold and silver mining companies outperforming gold itself. Uh, hopefully, the market conditions are favorable enough to break this downtrend line and start moving on up. Uh, those conditions are the TYX-TNX ratio. It's these conditions right here. And when this goes up, that's generally favorable which looks like it wants to go up eventually for gold and silver to go up. And sometimes the mining companies like to play along as well. So looking at GDX, GDX is higher today, up 0.77%. So we're still grinding on up. And SILJ is also slightly higher, but the momentum's coming back down on it. Longer term, this is what it looks like. And we do have a lot of resistance above SILJ that we have to work through to get on top of all that resistance and selling pressure. Crude oil down 1%. Uh, it does have a wick at the bottom, a little hammer, just with some hammer time. So the momentum's coming back up, and we don't have much selling pressure here. So are we going to head on higher here? We do have some resistance through this vicinity up here as we hit hit it multiple times and that's what we have to break through to go on up and this is longer term 
Now, is it possible we come down here? It definitely is possible that we could go lower. But short term, it doesn't look too bad for a, at least an attempt to move on up. And we'll see what happens. Natural gas up 1.1%. This does look like we're getting a little bit of a trend line here going. Let me see what the trend line is. Looks like we're trying to, we're, we're going to have to try to break this trend line here. It looks like it tried to, and it got rejected and came back down. On, the, on a very short term, there's that line I just drew in there. So the, the downtrend line hasn't been broken yet, but uh, it is very cheap. Natural gas in relationship to all of their assets and priced in dollars. XOP, yeah, you know me. Uh, doesn't look too bad. I think we, we might see some short term. A uh, short-term little move to the upside. This is a bearish engulfing or bullish engulfing and a bullish piercing. And if we were to look at that from a short-term perspective, it's just saying that this downtrend line, which is not drawn in there at all to an acceptable level, this downtrend line is broken to the upside, and we could see a continuation to the upside for XOP, the oil and gas exploration production companies. So that's what we're looking for is an up, upward move. But we have broken this, this trend line to the downside. So we might move sideways. And we could even come back to $100 uh, to, to do an inverted head and shoulders. So that's also still on the table. OIH also selling off a little bit, down half a percent. But the momentum is coming back up throughout the day. We do have a lot of longer term momentum coming down here, longer than you know, a few weeks, I should say, coming on down. And we gotta we gotta turn that momentum back around. It's gonna take a little bit of time, I think. Looking at the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust, we're right on support, and that support's holding at the moment. So we'll see what where that goes. Uh URNM down one percent. It is a little hammer candlestick. We'll see if we can get a bounce here and head on up. We are bouncing off the support level of this level here that we've touched a few times through here. And if we lose this, we could see further downside if we lose that support area. TAN also heading slightly lower, down 0.82%. Good old TANI. Uh, we're right on support, and we'll see where we go. We are squeezing up into this corner here. COPX, we're also uh, down a little bit. That is a hammer candlestick. Momentum's heading to the upside. So we'll see if that momentum can continue to the upside uh, in uh, next trading session. Lithium slightly lower today, but the momentum's heading back up. That's why it's a green candlestick. We're below this support resistance line, and we'll see what happens. We do have uh, lower lower highs and a little bit of lower lows and this one's trying to hold here so we'll see if we break on down or if we break on up remx up 0.62 percent that is a bullish kind of piercing pattern where we open down and the momentum's coming back up so that looks okay not a super strong candlestick and there's your momentum break and you're coming back up in a very short term, just to show you what that looks like for rare earths, strategic metals. The SPX uh, actually doesn't look too bad. That's a bullish engulfing to move higher. So, and and things change very rapidly on the sh in the short term. It's basically what you're doing is you're just looking for trend line breaks every single time. So like this is a trend line break, we're going to move higher. That's a trend line break, we're going to move lower. This is a trend line break. Stop that. It's too much there. That's a little trend line break that we're going to move higher. And the bullish engulfings are just candlestick patterns. It's that green candlestick engulfing the one before it to move on higher. NASDAQ also has one, so that indicates that we could potentially move higher. Doesn't look too bad there. Uh, emerging markets coming on down looks like we've got some sort of pattern here and that's generally a good spot to look and then i think we're going to head on higher 
for emerging markets. Uh, given that the DXY calms down and doesn't sh doesn't shoot on higher on us. Uh, home builders right on support. Looks like it's holding so far. Uh, that's the support line going through here. We've got Moo. Moo is the Vanek agribusiness ETF. Looks like it's trying to hold, maybe do a double bottom here. It's a bullish engulfing here, and we have a hammer candlestick. We'll see if it holds. Copper slightly lower today. That is a continuation pattern to the upside, and it could be a retest move. There you go. A little retest move there, and maybe we head on higher. We'll leave that in there. Lumber, uh, it's right at that support level. You can see a bunch of people traded through here. Uh, we've It's sitting on top of huge support. It's this big support line here that we're sitting on top of. So basically, we broke out and came all the way back down. Now we're doing a little pattern here, and I think we'll eventually work our way back up. Um, I, I'd like to see where interest rates go. I think if interest rates go lower, we'll see um, lumber move on up and home builders definitely firm up there. Looking at uh, <clears throat> iron ore futures, uh, we're up 1%. Actually looks good to move higher. Way to go, iron ore. Looks strong. Nickel uh, down 0.9 percent. Looks like we could see a little bit more selling pressure in the short term. Uh, aluminum basically moving sideways, right at the top there. Still looks good to move on higher. Baltic Dry Index. The sky is uh, higher today, up 2 percent. Doesn't look too bad, and we're just. Um, Nice big strong move up, and then we're just kind of moving sideways. Could be the continuation pattern to move to the upside for the Baltic Dry Index. And we've broken this pattern to the upside as well. Newcastle Coal moving just moving sideways. Uh, again, we're I think we're gonna come do a return move close to this and then move our, our way back on up. Um gold's doing this, and some of the companies are coming all the way back and doing a retest already. Ethereum down. Um, three and a half percent. So here's Ethereum, and we're just going back and forth here, getting more and more volatile as we go in a megaphone pattern. Bitcoin also down today, and it it's just moving sideways. Uh, it is a bullish, could be a bullish setup to move higher, but tough to say. Looks like the buyers and sellers are just battling each other outright at this uh, at this price point. But uh, that's what I've got for today, guys. And that's just really short term. I, I know longer term, we've got all the patterns and stuff like that. And, um, some people, they the way that I view these candlesticks, some they're like, oh, that's not technical analysis. Well, it works pretty well uh, from what I've done <laughs> historically. It works better than just staring at patterns and looking for false breakouts. It seems like a lot of the patterns have false breakout breakouts now and really gets people. Uh, mixed up sometimes uh, and it's probably done on purpose the uh probably the pros know what's going on and then they use their algorithms or whatever to uh to move things up and down uh to scare you out out of the stock and and get you all twisted in whatever which way but um that's what i've got for today guys i don't have anything else give me a thumb up for the content subscribe to the channel uh check out the website i've been fighting a, a cold and stuff so i'm kind of congested in the head uh, a little bit. You can probably hear it in my voice too. So hopefully that goes away as well. But um, yeah, we'll catch you on Sunday, 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And that's all I've got. Have a good day, guys. It's finding value.